So I do the reverse cover stitching two different ways. Um, and it depends on how flat I want the seam to lay. If I want it to be really, really flat, um, what I'll do is I will first stitch the seam with the lightning bolt stitch on my regular sewing machine. And I'll make that stitch first and then I'll open it up and I'll run the center needle of my cover stitch machine right down the center of that seam and that'll put the other two on each side. So I'll do it that way. Just like that. Um, and the seam that I really like to do this in um, would be like the inner thigh seam or a lot of times the outer seam like on the Inspires. But the one I do it most often on is that rounded, um, just right over the butt curved seam on the strides because I really want that particular to seam to lay really flat. So I almost always um, stitch it first with the um, zig or the lightning bolt stitch and then I open it up and do this. So I'll show you again what it looks like when I get to the curved part. Okay, so here I am. I'm coming up to the part where um, there's that little swoop across the butt and it curves around. And since I'm going to open it up and lay it out flat, I have to notch the seam and don't worry, I go back and I trim this all up really close to the cover stitch, but I notch it. So this even holds true. I know it holds true for wovens, but it even holds true for knits. Anytime you're going to have a concave curve and a convex curve, um, you notch it and then notch it out with little V's and then you could just straight notch those. So I just do that, pull it around. It's kind of hard with one hand. My videographer has gone to bed. And then that's what it looks like on the right side. So it's really smooth. So after that, um, you can leave it because nobody really is going to see the inside except for you. But if that bothers you and you don't like that, look and sometimes for the most part most of the time i go back and i clip right there so here's one the previous leg that i just did where i just went and i just clipped it and cleaned it up a little bit so it's a little closer to the stitching okay so i'm going to show you the other way to cover stitch um still reverse cover stitch but instead of just doing a straight serger mach or a sewing machine um stitch or a lightning bolt stitch I'm going to use my serger. So this is an example using on how to install the gusset. So I've already stitched the gusset to one side of the back and I've used my serger and I've stitched from here to here. And now I'm going to just top stitch with my cover ma stitch machine just a little section of this. So it'll already be all top stitched on that side. So when I come back and cover stitch the rest of it, I'll definitely catch it and I won't have any loose threads. So again, I want the bottom of the cover stitch look to be on the top. So I'm gonna cover stitch it in this direction and I want to press the seam allowances away from the gusset. So I'm just gonna fold that back and I'm gonna start it up right about there. And when I do it using a serger stitch, I make sure that this far needle comes and it stitches right along that inside line right where my serger st stitch stopped. So I'm going to line up that far right needle right along that edge where that is. And I tug it open as well when I stitch it so it's a nice tight seam. So that's one side of the gusset. I'm stitching the um, center back seam and I've already stitched the gusset to that side and then I went ahead and I top stitched a portion of that gusset. Now I'm going to finish this back seam up. And then 
I'm going to go over to my top or my cover stitch and I'm going to finish this cover stitch and I'm going to pull all of the side seam allowance over to the side so that gusset is going to lay nice and flat and it'll be top stitched out to the side. So now I'm going to top stitch this edge over to that side. So come on over here to the other cover stitch machine. I'm going to push my side seam allowance over to this side. So now this time I'm going to make sure that this far needle sets right and cover stitch right along that edge. Again, I'm keeping that needle right along that edge. So let's take a look at that. Just like that. Super smooth, super flat. And on the outside, those edges are pulled out to the side and it lays really flat. Okay, so what I've done is turn the pants so they're right side out. And we're gonna attempt to sew that final inner leg seam. So I take a look always first and make sure that I know which way this seam needs to be pushed. So in order to keep, again, a flat, smooth gusset, I've gotta push it that direction. So I'm gonna make sure when I do all the scrunching that I start with the cover stitch, start the cover stitch with the um, seam allowance going that same direction. So I'm gonna just scrunch, scrunch, scrunch till everything is kind of scrunched up in my hands like that. And then I'm gonna to have to start feeding, well, unless I know where that's at. And then I've gotta feed all of that, all oh, my needles, underneath. Gotta see where it's at. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. This is what I was meaning when I typed that earlier today. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. All of that's got to go underneath. So I can get to this inside seam right here. I'm almost there. There it is. There it is, right there. So I'm also going to set my stitch length to as long as it will go. So mine will be four and I'm going to stitch that really long because there's a lot of back pressure here and this is not going to want to feed through because I'm in such a tight little stop space. So increasing the length of your stitch right here for a little while until you get some openness really helps you have some uniform stitches down there. All right. So I found my seam. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's right there. It's the only one left that's a serger seam that hasn't been tacked down. It's right there. So this is what I mean by it being really tight, and I'm not kidding. This isn't easy, and I would really highly suggest you practice it first on a, like a pair of capris or something like this. This is, or three quarter length ones or something or other. This is full length, and this is definitely the hardest version to start with. So um, if I were you, I would start with capris. Again, at first it's a little ugly because I can only get five or six stitches at a time before I have to stop and kind of feed it through again. This is why having an increased stitch length at the very beginning and also at the very end really, really helps. Again, I'm going to try to keep that right or the left needle just, I'm just going to do my best because it's not always pretty to me. It's already starting to get a little bit easier. My machine is doing a good job at pulling all of that through. Again, this is way, way, way easier. If you, if you were using and making capris or something like a shortened version, 
um, this would already be like opened up and really easy. Again, just pulling that through, pushing it through. We're scrunching, less scrunch now. And you can see there's more room as I get to the larger thighs area. So probably about now I might switch it down on my stitch length a little bit. Whoa, that was close. Again, I'm still going to try to pull the seam apart a little bit. So I have a nice smooth Again, there's really no trick to this. It's just difficult. But it has a nice look to it and it makes it look nice and finished. All right, I've got up to the point where I've got coming up to the gusset. And as you can see, it's pretty easy now. It's easy and then it's gonna get hard again. Now I'm getting towards the other end, the other leg where it's gonna get tight and tricky again. I just increased my stitch length because now I'm only getting five to six or three to four stitches at a time before I've got to move and adjust and make sure I'm not stitching anything underneath. Again, I've got a really long stitch length because there's some back pressure on this as I'm pulling it in to try to keep it even. I hope you guys can see. Ah, I'm almost to the end, yay. And that's it. You've made it. So finish that out. Make sure you don't catch any other pieces on there. And then I lift it up and then I just slowly start to feed it back out, kind of like I fed it in when I started it. And it's tricky, but that's how you do it.